Confidential. I'm here with renowned sports writer and journalist Jeff Perlman. Welcome to Iona. Thank you. Thanks. So, um, how did you first get into the journalism field? Aren't you even going to comment on my uh, fine wardrobe <laughs> that I wore here today? I mean, come on. It's very, <laughs> it's very athletic. Yeah, I try to be very casual. <laughs> um, how did I get into journalism? Well, I was, uh, I actually grew up in Mayo Pack, not that far away from here. And I, um, I wrote for my high school newspaper. And uh, I sort of fell in love with it very early. One of my first stories from my high school newspaper was uh, about how cheerleading wasn't a sport. And I was sort of this... <laughs> I was like this geek cross-country runner in high school and, and didn't get much attention. And I write this story, ripping cheerleading, and all of a sudden all the cheerleaders are mad at me and they're surrounding me. And I'm like, this is the greatest thing ever. So, uh, you know, I, I, I sort of, my in, initial love for journalism um, was the, the attention you get. You know, and oh my God, all these people paying attention to you suddenly, which is almost the last thing I like now. Mm -hmm. You know, now to me it's about the recording and the writing, the craftsmanship of it. So that's really what got me into it. And then I went to the University of Delaware and I, uh, I got very involved in the student newspaper, and that sort of sent me on my way. Okay. And now, how do you choose the topics that you write about? Um, do you mean for books or, or articles? Um, for both. Well, I mean, I would say for, for books, um, I really, you know, I, I kind of have a combination of criteria in my mind what, I wanna, what, I wanna, what I'm looking for. Number one is something that will hold my interest for a prolonged period of time. You don't want to spend two years working on something and not care about the subject. Um, you know, to write like a book on knitting for two years wouldn't be <laughs> the best match for me. Number two is you, you, you want to do something that at least has a, has a chance of selling. You know, you, every topic I've written about uh, has, has at least had a shot in my mind of making sort of the bestseller list. Um, Roger Clemens, Barry Bonds, the 86 Mets, Walter Payton, the Dallas Cowboys. You know, they're all, they're all subjects that have a shot, at least a shot. Uh, and number three is I want to write about something that hasn't really been written about that much. Um, my last book was about Walter Payton, the great Chicago Bear. There had never really been a definitive book written about him. So for me, I, I am always looking for to sort of fit those three criteria, and, and, and that's usually how I figure it out. How do you approach writing for your columns versus books differently when you first oh, start it's, out? Well, it's totally different. The, the biggest thing with a book is, is research. That's a whole, that's what I really love about it. I mean, you, you basically, you know, when you, write a, when you write a quick turnaround piece, um, you only have so much time when you can research. You, oftentimes you only have a day or even a couple hours. So with a book, I, it's all about research to me. It's about taking whatever, a year, and just living that subject and becoming mm -hmm. that subject. And, you know, Walter Payton was from Mississippi, so I spent a lot of time in Mississippi driving through the old towns and finding every high school classmate and everyone he ever went to school with and, and just diving into it. With a column, you basically, you do as much research as you can. You make a bunch of calls and you turn it around. But the the real care and, and the, what a book has is, is real sort of, you basically are putting your life into it. Mm -hmm. You're putting everything you have into that thing. And a column is, pretty, is relatively disposable. So when you're writing a book about how many people do you interview? Uh, well, ideally, I would love to hit a day when I, hit, when I interview 1,000. That's sort of my magic mm -hmm. number. I've never hit. I mean, for Walter Payton, I think I interviewed 700, and wow. around 700. And for this book I'm working on now, um, I've done about 400, which feels disappointing, you know, after doing that many. But I, mm -hmm. really, the goal is that I, I remember early on there was a writer named Gary Smith for Sports Illustrated, and he uh, he once said, uh, you know, never don't make the call. I forgot what his exact words were, but, but it was basically mm -hmm. always make the extra call. That's what he yeah. said. Always make the extra call. Always call the next person. Always call the next person. Always call the next person. There's always someone who has a story to tell. And if you're writing about a famous person, the thing is, if you're writing about a famous person. Um, the famous person may not remember the guy who was there for a week, but the guy who was there mm -hmm. for a week is always going to remember the famous person. You know, like if you meet, if you see like Tom Cruise walk into the Mirage Diner, yeah. right? And you say, hey, Tom, <laughs> he's not going to remember that a week from now, or maybe even a day from now, but you will always remember seeing Tom Cruise. So that's yeah. kind of my philosophy. So when you interview people, how do you get them to open up for you? Um, a couple, couple of tricks, I guess. Number one is uh, you always do as much research as possible, right? You want the person to, to sort of, get the idea um, that you've done your homework. So I'll never be like, uh, so how old are you? Or so where are you from? You know, those are things I should know going in. You know, you want to have as much knowledge as possible about the person as possible. You don't want to ask stupid basic questions. I hate using the word stupid, but you really don't <laughs> want to use, ask stupid basic questions. You want, to, you want to show this person that you know everything about them, that you genuinely care about their life. Um, and the other thing is, is uh, I never go in with like a list of questions. I'll never be like, so Steve, how, you know, blah, 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 blah. 
It's always in my head. And what you really want to do, the way to get people to open up is you turn it into a conversation. You know, how's it going? Oh, it's going well. So you remember that time? Oh, that was crazy. Yeah. The more something, the more conversational something is, the more they forget that you're interviewing them and it becomes a one-on-one, -on -one, just interpersonal reaction, interaction. Well, you've done everything from being writer at Sports Illustrated, ESPN, your teacher, you've written for food and fashion. Mm -hmm. What's been your favorite job and why? Um, that's funny. I would say, uh, I would actually say, I would say writing books. I mean, I, you know, I'm like a, uh, to be honest with you, I'm, I mean, it's actually funny. I, as you know, I, I came in here, I rushed in, I'm wearing my sweatshirt, I'm wearing my baggy <laughs> basketball shirts. I bought these at Marshalls for 12 bucks, right? I'm wearing <laughs> flip-flops, you know? This is what I wear every day, you know? Yeah. At three, come three o'clock, I would drive to Ward Elementary School and pick up my kids, you know? Um, and I'll take my daughter to acting, I'll drop my son for a play date. Mm -hmm. um, and I get to sit in a Starbucks and write. And I get to go to like Mississippi and drive around Jackson, Mississippi, and eat at the, you know, the round table restaurant and eat grits and <laughs> fried chicken. And you get to live this life, you know? And every time you write about a new person, especially with a book, you are diving into their life. And you're allowed to, for some reason, because you have a little thing, imaginary badges as journalist, you're allowed to sort of ask any question you want. It's like the greatest job in the world. And I, I really consider myself, if you told me, Mayo Pack High School, 22 years ago, that this is what I'd be doing for a living, I would have been euphoric. And now here I am, and I am you for it. You know, it's, it's the best job in the world. Yeah, that's great. So you've written some controversial pieces from anything from John Rocker to your latest book on Walter Payton. Mm -hmm. Do you set out to be controversial, or <laughs> does it just happen? No, you know, <laughs> I think the problem is, or I think what happens is, um, it's like uh, a lot of times in the media today, and I, I think over the course of my career, um, journalists are, are oftentimes sort of afraid to ask the extra question, or... They feel like, all right, like John Rocker, who was a pitcher for the Braves in the 90s. Um, everyone knew he was a jerk. And everyone knew he was kind of a racist. I, I, I mean, it wasn't a secret, really, you know, that he was this way. But uh, I think there's like this conventional idea of what reporters are supposed to ask and what they're not supposed to ask. And, oh, he's a great baseball player. He throws hard. Uh, he's from Macon, Georgia, blah, 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 fine. Um, once he starts talking about, you know, queers on the train, <laughs> you know, or calls a, a, a black teammate a fat monkey, well, why are you going to write that? Why would you write that? Mm -hmm. To me, the, the whole goal of this is to show who people really are. And not, it's not gotcha journalism. I just want to know who people are. I want to know who you really are. Why do I want to write fiction about someone? You know, same with Walter Payton. The, the book was not a rip job on Walter Payton in any way, shape, or form. Anyone who actually read the book will tell you that. Um, but the, the truth of the matter is, people are, are complicated. And if you wrote a book on me, if I wrote a book on you, um, we'd find things that are, that are both good and bad, you know, highs and lows. We all have them. And I think if you're going to write honestly about someone, you, you don't just write a puff piece. Or you, you just can't. So I, it's not looking for controversy. It's just looking to write a truthful account of someone's life. Okay. And if you could interview anyone in the world, who would it be? Hmm. You know, honestly, this is a lame answer, but um, I don't have, like, uh, people always think, like, there's some, like, I mean, obviously, I'd love to go back in time and interview, like, Martin Luther King or Abraham Lincoln. Or, but uh, I really enjoy, like, my favorite pieces involve interviewing, um, like, uh, like, the homeless guy in the city or some teacher or, you know, like, I love just learning about people's lives. And I, I, we always say this in the business, and it's 100% true, and no one believes this until they actually get in it. The, the guy sitting at the end of the bar, right, or the teacher teaching my son's third grade class, my son's actually in first grade, I don't know why I said that, but teaching my <laughs> first grade class, is significantly more interesting than Derek Jeter, you know, or Eli Manning, because they have real life experiences that don't involve showing up the ballpark every day, lifting weights for two hours, showing up the next day, lifting weights for two hours. So to me, I, I love interviewing non-celebrities, you know, non-famous people, just kind of shooting the breeze and, and talking about their lives. That's a bad answer, but that's the truth. Okay. Yeah. And um, what advice would you give to students pursuing a career in the journalism field? Um, well, I always say the, uh, the most important thing is, um, one of the most important things is, uh, all right, like you said, you said before, you want to go into journalism, right? Yes. And there are, this will go, I'll give you this specifically for Iona students, right? You want to go okay. into journalism. Mm -hmm. There are thousands of other people just like you who want to go into journalism, right? And a lot of these people, I went to Delaware, you went to Iona, we're both same level programs, right? A lot of these people went to Syracuse, and they went to Northwestern, and they went to Princeton, and they went to Harvard, and they went to Yale. And the thing I always did in my career, I've always done in my career, and really did coming out of college, 
is you always um, separate yourself. You always, you never go for, if you cover a football game, you never write the lead to the story, you know, or a basketball game since there's no football here. Iona beat Manhattanville 83-76 yesterday behind 22 points. You never do that. You always look for the different and you always look for the unique and you always try to find that. And the, the way you make yourself stand out is by writing, by looking for the different, you know, and I, I can't even, I wish I could even state it better, but like when people are hiring students, they don't want to see, you know, the bland. You know, there's no reason to, to write blandly. Always take a shot. And when I was in college, we always, I always like, it was all about like just making my stuff, trying as hard as I could to jump off the page where someone would read that and say, wow, that's different. That's a unique take. That's, that's, a, that's an odd way of looking at things. And sometimes it backfires. Sometimes it completely fails. But more often than not, someone looking for, to hire a, a young journalist out of college is going to say, wow, this is not a cookie cutter journalist. This is someone different. So for me, if you can find a way to separate yourself, it doesn't matter where you go to college in that case because people just want to see who can write and who can't. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I'm Amanda Koble for Iona College Confidential.